Bhagavad Gita is a book of mankind's collected experience of and answers to life's most basic questions. Who I am? From where do I come? What is my purpose and destiny? And most practically, how do I find happiness? These podcasts originate in the lectures of Neil Bhatt, a disciple of Swami Chinmayananda. They are presented here in 20 to 30 minute segments, each covering three of the Gita's 701 verses. Welcome to Gita Wisdom for Daily Living. So we had been discussing chapter 3, Karma Yoga, Yoga of Action. So in the first six chapters, we are learning about ourselves as limited individual beings. As we have seen before, the Gita, the elaboration on Tattvam Asi, the Tvam part is the first six chapters are elaborating on the, the Thom part. So we have learned about who we are as limited beings in chapter 2, that we are immortal selves but consider ourselves to be mortal because of our association with the body, mind and intellect. So as limited individual beings, activity is involuntary. This is not our absence that whether we act or not. As a living being, activity is involuntary. To survive, to exist as a living being, activity is must. That is the signature of life. And therefore, Bhagavan has been focusing on activity, actions, how one can act in this world so one can accelerate his own or her own evolution. So Bhagavan had been very clearly and precisely giving Arjuna instructions how to act in this world. He has given basically five steps so far. The first step he said is karmanyevadikaraste. You have no right over the fruits of actions, only on the actions and therefore first advice is never act keeping a particular fruit in mind. The step number one, then make sure that you understand that fruit is not in your hand and therefore do not focus on the results of your actions. Second, he said is, yoga staha kuru karmani. Keeping that in mind that the result is in not my hand, but action is in my hand, I have to prepare myself to act properly. And that's what he said, yoga staha kuru karmani. Establish yourself in yoga and then act in this world. And how to establish yoga, he said clearly, samatvam yoga uchyate, balance your mind. So, don't act for the fruits, prepare yourself for acting in this world, by balancing your mind. Now you are prepared, the field of your action should be yagnarthat kuru karmani, narthat anyatra loko em karma bandhana. Actions performed other than for yagnas are binding and therefore act for yagna. That gives us the field of activity. The field of activity should be that which is in line with all activities in this world, which is supporting this universe. Act for the greater good, not keeping your narrow focus on what I want to get out of my activity, but act I must, and I must in a manner which is compatible to all other activities in this world. And then he also said, Asaktaha karma satatam karyam kuru samachara. After establishing the goal that I will act in this world because that's how I exist as living being, I have no control over the results, and therefore I will never act with the result in mind and I will work for the greater good. But now I also have to have ability to not get attached. So, asaktaha satatam karyam karma samachara. Bhagavan very precisely telling Arjuna that the pitfall in activity is attachment. So Bhagavan Buddha said the root cause of all sorrows and unhappiness 
is desire. Bhagavad Gita goes one step further and says, desire is actually the product of attachment and therefore avoid the attachment. If you avoid the attachment, desire will not be your problem. Asaktaha satadam by not attaching yourself to either the activity or the field of actions or the results. Because all these are automatic. If you follow your ordained dharma, then everything will fall in place. You have to have faith in the system, in this law which is created by the God himself. So he said, therefore, do not get attached to any of this activity, your field of actions. And that's it. Even if you come to the conclusion that you have now nothing to achieve, loka sangram eva api, that you still have to continue working. Even if you come to the conclusion that I have achieved everything I want to, I have no more desires, I have nothing to gain, you still have to continue working for loka sangraha, for the preservation of the society, preservation of the whole system. So the act you must Keeping all these five points in mind, Bhagavan says, and you will not incur any sin, you will achieve the param apnoti purushaha, you will achieve the highest goal, and the highest goal to achieve permanent happiness, permanent bliss, a place where there is no sorrow, there is no mortality, and there is no unhappiness. So, Bhagavan has very clearly laid out path for Arjuna, and then he said that even People like Janaka and others, they have achieved that great goal. So it's not something hypothetical I'm giving you for the first time, Arjuna. There are people who have achieved this in their lives by just acting in this world in an appropriate manner, such as Janaka, etc. And then Bhagavan says that, Name parthaha asti kartavyam trisu lokeshu kinchana. Now obviously I can only tell someone to do something if I am following that path. There's the story about Gnande or Eknath. A mother brings a child and says, my child is eating sugar every day. I think it's a story about Eknath. So can you please advise him not to do that? Santa Eknath said, bring him tomorrow and then I'll tell him. Why not today? Said, today is not a good day. Bring, bring him after one week. She brings him after one week and Eknath just simply says, don't eat sugar. And the mother asked, why didn't you say that a week ago? And he said, because at that time I was eating myself sugar. So I couldn't advise him. So I have to refrain myself from doing so. And now I can tell him not to do that. So Bhagavan said, look, I am setting example by myself. Name path asti kartavyam trishu loke sokinchana. I have nothing to achieve which I have not achieved in these three worlds. Na vaptam, a vaptavyam. I have nothing that I have not attained which I need to attain. Because I am the Lord of this universe. Vartayeva Chakarmani. I still continue to act in this world. So here, as we can see, his entire life as Krishna Avatar is an exemplary living. How to live as a leader, as a friend, as a brother. He says, I have nothing to gain, but I am still working. I have nothing to do with this Mahabharata war, but I am still here. Other way to look at it is more appropriate. Every time he says I, he refers to him as the one who identifies with the Supreme Self and not with a limited entity as an individual. So he said, I as the creator, I as the Lord of this universe, have really nothing to gain, nothing that I have not achieved that I need to achieve. I continue to still act in this world as the lawgiver and law enforcer. If the lawgiver and law enforcer, Ishwara, the Lord is not present, actively participating in this universe, then obviously the universe will be a chaos. Therefore, Bhagavan said, Yadi hi aham na vartyayam jatu karmani atandritaha Mama Vartman Vartamte Manushyaha Partha Sarvasaha. Why I keep working even though I have nothing to achieve in this world? Because if I don't act in this world, Karmani Atandritaha, without taking any rest. Tandra means sleep. So when you go to sleep, we give rest to the body and mind. 
So the mind is not functioning, body is not functioning. There is no activity taking place, not even any kind of perception. So Bhagavan says, Atman is without taking any rest, I continue to work. Why that is? He says, Mama Vartmanu Vartante Manushyaha Partha Sarvasa. All beings are following my example that if I stop working, they will stop work too. Because he has previously just said, Yad Yad Acharati Sreshta Purusaha Tat Tat Eva Itaro Janaha. Who can be the greatest role model than Bhagwan himself? So Bhagwan said that if I stop working, then obviously there will be a chaos. People are following my example. As the creator of this universe, I have to remain engaged. That I cannot take rest and say, I have given the laws and now I'm done. Listen, I have to remain engaged in this universe as a law enforcer. As we know, the laws of nature are explicit. There is no exception. We know there are laws in nature, so we know there is a law giver. If there is a law, we know there must be a law giver. But if laws are enforced without an exception, then we know that there is a law enforcer there too. Because we know for sure that without any law enforcer, no law remains effective. If there are no cops on the road, we'll be driving at whatever speed limit we feel like. We may be driving at 80 miles an hour and suddenly see all the cars ahead of us slowing down. We realize there must be a cop ahead of us. So I better slow down myself. So unless there is a law enforcer, laws are of no value. In this nature, we observe that all laws are explicit and there is no exception. If lawgiver is not there, there cannot be law. And if there is no enforcer, the law is not effective. In this nature, the laws are explicit that we can experience. Law of gravitation is applicable to all, whether you're a good person, a bad person, a living being, or an inert matter. If I jump from a third floor window, Mother Earth will receive me as Newton predicted, because there is no exception for good people that I consider myself to be. So Bhagavan said that, I remain constantly engaged in activity even though I have nothing to gain because my example, people follow in this way. Mama Vartmanu Vartante Manusyaha Partha Sarvasaha. We follow the example. We learn from the great saints and sages and avataras. Even you can say that Bhagwan constantly have to come in this world as avatara. Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata. I will come back every time. So he constantly remains engaged in activity. And Bhagavan said that just to set example for all the beings. Because if I don't get engaged, utsadi yuhu ime loka ha na kuryam karma chet aham. If I do not act, if I do not engage myself in activity, these worlds will be destroyed. These worlds will not remain what they are without these laws of nature that we have discussed. If the laws were also confusing, then there won't be any cosmos, there will be chaos. These laws are explicit, they are enforced explicitly because I, as the creator, remain engaged in this universe as lawgiver and law enforcer. And if I don't do that, Sankarasya Chakartaham, here is where I think we have difficulty. Everything else about the two and a half verses we have discussed, not much of controversy. Sankarasya Chakartaham, Syam Apa Hanyam Imaha Prajaha. If I don't act diligently and have explicit laws in nature, there will be inappropriate couplings of things and beings. Sankara is mixed, inappropriate mixture. So we typically interpret as caste system. Bhagavan is not saying Varna Sankara here. He did not use the word Varna here. So I will say he said Sankara, any inappropriate coupling will create destruction for this universe. He said Upahanyami imaha prajaha, that I will destroy all these people, all these beings will be destroyed because inappropriate 
influences. So we can understand from our own perspective. These days we talk more about organic food. Why do we want to eat organic food? Because the other food has these chemical fertilizers and they have some poisonous influences or contamination which is not good for me. If the crop is growing, the tree is growing, there is a natural preservation and nutrition for that. If I don't provide the proper preservation and nutrition for that seed, then there will be outside influences which are not appropriate and the manifestation of that seed will be in a tree or a fruit or grains which will have all the influences on the seed which was inappropriate. Therefore now the fruits of that tree is not as good for me as had it not been having any inappropriate contamination. So we are more concerned about natural growth, natural evolution of all the beings. This praja which creator say I created in the beginning along with yagna, along with that spirit of cooperative activities in an appropriate manner, that will be confused. Because there will be wrong influences which are not appropriate. It will be contaminated by poisonous influences. And therefore, eventually it will destroy them. Even if we take just our food, if we continue to eat contaminated food, we will die. Or we will create even the next progeny very contaminated. The parents who take drugs. Obviously, their children have that effect even the children are not taken any drugs, but they will have those drug effects. So to protect and preserve, you have to keep things as they were designed by the Creator. The Bhagavan said, I remain engaged in these activities to enforce the laws of nature. So the evolution of this world remains as designed and does not get confused by any type of inappropriate influence. And therefore I said, if I don't do that, everything will destroy. Now you as a person, Bhagavan said, I give you those five pointers how to act in this world. You have to follow that because you are a role model to somebody. Somebody will follow your example. And therefore, do this thing. Yogastha Kuru Karmani, Yagnarthat Kuru Karmani, without any attachment you act. We'll stop right here. If you find this podcast helpful, please support it by donating any amount by going to the episode's website at neilbutt.podbean.com or at chinmayarichmond.org. Thank you. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschid Dukkha Bhag Bhavet Om Shantihi 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om